Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for coming today. There's already over 50 people here in the chat today. If you're watching right now or if you'll be watching as a resource later, thank you so much for being here. I'm Bubba Gatter, Executive Director of Varsity Esports Foundation and an esports ambassador for DNA Distributing. I'm so glad you're here because we've got a great set of panelists today and some amazing information for you as a reseller to go out there and have great conversations because this is our DNH Solutions Lab webcast and it's uh, our our webcast today is eSports Anywhere Virtual and Hybrid Events. I'm going to bring in the guest today. We've got an amazing person who you've probably seen on DNH Live or other um, DNH presentations, even in some of the stuff I've put out. Chris Phillips, the Technical Enablement Supervisor. How are you, sir? I, I've only been on a couple times. Let's let's be <laughs> modest here. Yeah, right. They don't see very much of me. <laughs> hey, Bubba. Hey. All right. Now we're going to bring in somebody really awesome because you probably already friend her because she is your best friend at AMD, Leslie Peritano. How are you doing today? Doing great. Super happy to be here. And I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm so glad to dive in and learn a little bit more about what's going on with uh, what you do and, and some some experience you may have about all this, you know, internet and esports and gaming stuff that you might know. Computers, maybe bad, the internet, internet. Computers. yeah, maybe. the interwebs. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chris, you're gonna take over for a few minutes here. If you'll set up a video for us, and we'll jump back in. So everybody, stick around, watch a video. Chris is gonna set it up, and we're gonna get into some good information. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, guys, what we want to start off today is kind of talk about the hardware side of uh, doing uh, virtual esports and hybrid engagement events. So we're gonna, I'm going to play a quick video uh, showing uh, the hardware it takes to kind of do these events. And when we come back, we're going to kind of talk about the software side of things. And we'll have Leslie and Bubba throw in some input on how to set up uh, the software best uh, for these streaming platforms. So let's go ahead and take a look at the, the, the video first and we'll kind of jump back in and have a discussion. So I wanted to give you guys a quick look at a content creator or streamer setup because it is very similar to what you would see in a normal single person unified communication setup, but there are a couple of key differences I wanted to point out. The differences are in the audio, video, and how that content is streamed to its platform. And I'm going to start with the audio. And where you being with the audio is with the microphone. Uh, you've probably seen microphones similar to this before. It's a, it's a high quality single person microphone. It has many large uh, microphone elements inside here that do a, a much better job at capturing all the audio that is coming uh, from the speakers or the caster's mouth. Uh, towards uh, the elements. Uh, it does a great job of also only capturing audio directly in front of it so you're not picking up ambient audio around it. And this is very important because audio is really the lifeline of what a caster or a streamer does. Uh, telling that story is far more important uh, than showing them beautiful graphics or, or, or great gameplay. Uh, that audio is the actual story and uh, with good audio a broadcast can survive with bad audio it just it simply cannot it's, it's hard to watch a stream if the audio sounds like uh, two pieces of uh, uh, two tin cans connected with a rope it just doesn't work that well and the second part uh, you want to think about is uh, the actual headphones you're going to be using uh, there are two different schools of thought you can go with you can either go with uh, trying to get headphones that give you the best audio quality or headphones that are the most comfortable you could also do one that gives you both, but that costs a little bit more. Um, the advantages for having one that has a higher uh, audio quality is it allows you to monitor your stream a little bit better. Uh, those might come at the cost of comfort. A higher comfort allows you to wear those headphones for, for multiple hours, and content creators and streamers are streaming for six, eight, ten hours at a time, so that comfort is very important. For me personally, I like a good wireless headphone because I like to be more comfortable, and this has these have decent uh, audio quality. Uh, with audio out of the way, I want to talk about video next. And video is important because uh, uh, most people are just using a little little camera that's in the top of their laptop or the top of their monitor. And for streaming purposes, that's not usually the best case. Usually, what you want to get is yourself a, a dedicated uh, USB 
uh, webcam that can at minimum shoot 1080p at 60 frames per second. Why is that important? Because that is generally what you're going to be using as the actual intake for your stream. You're usually going to be uh, recording your video at 1080p, 60 frames per second, so you want to make sure your camera can do the same. Uh, you might output that to a streaming service at 720p at 60 frames per second, but you want to start at that 1080p 60. Uh, so you want to make sure your, your camera can do that. If you're going to upgrade yourself, you can always grab yourself a USB capture device or some kind of PCI capture device and then use a, uh, a DSLR camera to do your capturing as well. Uh, aside from that, on the audio and video side, there's a something else that streamers and casters do that a little bit of a trade secret that I want to share with you. Uh, when, you're, when you're playing a game or you're doing content, uh, that, those programs can generally use a lot of system resources. Even, even a small impact game can, can eat up a, a computer's resources a lot. Streaming, on the other hand, can also use a lot of resources, a consistent amount of resources. And if you have both of those programs running in parallel with each other, at some point they're going to be fighting over the same street resources and one or the other or both are going to suffer. So what most casters or content creators do is actually have a two PC setup. They have a PC that's doing their actual content, their games, and they have a PC that's actually doing the streaming. So they connect their microphone, their camera, and all their other peripherals to the, the, the laptop or the PC that's doing the streaming, and they have just their PC for the game. And then they will send that video signal from the PC to the laptop through a technology called NDI. And uh, without further ado, we're actually going to jump into OBS and kind of show you uh, how to set up OBS and then how to connect these two PCs together so you can then stream at a higher quality to the platform of your choosing. Awesome. Awesome. That's, that, was a great, that was a great video. Thank you, Chris. That was a great video. That's uh, very helpful stuff. I know we're going to talk a lot about that today, and hopefully it's not too overwhelming. And I wanted to throw out, as Chris sets up for stuff here, if you have questions, to please throw them in the Q&A area, and we'll do our best to kind of answer some questions about this tech, because I, 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 as a, a big nerd, spent a lot of time on YouTube for many years trying to figure out what to do. So, Chris, uh, yeah, what, what do you got going on here? What's this uh, screen share you're doing right now? You might be muted. I'm not sure. You might have muted because of the video. I am I am still muted. You're right. <laughs> yep, yep, I it happens. I, 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 I was going to chime in. Back. It looks like OBS to me. <laughs> yeah, but I want to take you back to the first time you guys started to stream because uh, the first time I opened up OBS, I mm. was lost. And uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, OBS is an open source uh, software that is kind of become the industry standard for mm. uh, people that are streaming to to Twitch, to YouTube, to Facebook, to LinkedIn, whatever the platform you're using. Uh, there's a second uh, uh, piece of software, uh, uh, Streamlabs, uh, which is based heavily off of OBS. Streamlabs is owned by Logitech. Um, when we're talking about settings in OBS or Streamlabs, the settings we're gonna talk about today are pretty much one of the same. If, you're, if they wanna use uh, Streamlabs, they can go ahead and use it. If they wanna use OBS, they can use that. The settings, including where they're at in terms of the actual settings menu, completely identical. So I'm hoping, Bubba Leslie, <laughs> if we can we can get we can quell someone's fear who might be watching today, going, "This is sure. too complicated. I can yeah. never set this up. How do I do it?" So uh -huh. what we're gonna do is we're gonna start <laughs> by kind of taking a look into the settings and setting up OBS to actually send our signal uh, to the streaming platform of our choice. So can under you, file can settings, me, can Chris, Chris, can you also help me understand uh, when I try to explain streaming, like how gameplay can show up and my face, like what so, I know it's layers and stuff, but when people I've tried to describe that to people, like, how can you put your face over your gameplay video? What does that even mean? Can you describe yeah, a little bit what it, that means as well it, throughout this? Yeah, I, I can. And trust me, we could talk about OBS for three hours <laughs> and, and talk about how you can set up things, how you can set up fades and wipes multi cameras mm. a million things and and quite frankly we probably will uh there will be times where we'll go into deeper depths into this uh but generally speaking like you were saying bubba each one of these sources and, and unfortunately we just won't have the time to get into this today 
can be mm -hmm. set up uh, to to layer on top of each other one after another. So you can have uh, your camera, you can make yourself a nice graphical mm -hmm. border, put the border down, put your camera on top of it, and then put your gameplay underneath it. And then you have kind of this three layer sandwich. Uh, how to do things definitely so yeah i definitely i know you're probably do that right now but maybe later we'll let, i'd love to see like you know just fun background and and just what a, a, a maybe a picture of a face cam that's that's something yeah. i know it's real beneficial to see later down the road i hope we uh, I, like i said i don't know if we'll get into it today we'll see <laughs> we got a lot to talk about today yeah uh but kind of what what you're looking at now is the the settings of obs just I, this is a fresh install of obs so everything's kind of pretty much default uh, for the exception of one thing, I uh, the the general is just basically how how the, the software looks and runs. Uh, don't need to really worry too much about that. Stream is where you will select or uh, you will enter your settings for what streaming uh, services you're going to use. Um, the by default there are there are a couple of them by default. Um, if you were to go to uh, Twitch, actually, I'll go to, to YouTube. This is kind of what it looks like when it's unconfigured. You could either kind of do the recommended way, which is sign in with your credentials, or you can uh, sign in using a stream key. Um, if you don't know what a stream key is, if you go to any of these streaming platforms in your, your profile, you can get uh, this long, how many characters you want to say, Leslie, like 40 characters for a yeah, stream key. There's a ton of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 a lot of characters uh that is uh, it's basically a key that's unique to you you put it in obs and and then when you say all right i'm ready to stream to youtube it will take that key and send it to your your channel instead of somebody else's channel so that's another way of doing it uh, i would recommend though if they have like and for most cases that's great for like let's say you have a event that you, you are going to be doing the streaming for. Like, like I am streaming for DNH. My, me personally, I'm going to stream for DNH. Or Bubba, you're going to stream personally for DNH. Instead of DNH giving us their login to Twitch or their login to YouTube, they can just send us the key, and then we can enter, put the key into OBS. And without having to need their credentials to log into their platform, which is risky, we can stream on their behalf. Um. That key is though then very powerful because now you've given your the keys to your castle to someone else. You gotta make sure that you can either A change the key after the fact or B uh, it's someone you trust. I trust Bubba with my stream key. So I would give Bubba my stream key any day of the week. So <laughs> and, and and you know, I'm, these words are gonna come back to me when I'm in court. <laughs> sure. I'm in DNH court. So uh, hey, so, so Chris, so stream stream key wise, so all this stuff you're showing us here, this yep. is the back end of for those who are maybe a bit overwhelmed. I know you can't probably see our faces right now, but you see the screen share. And if you're if you're overwhelmed, this is just the back end dashboard um, for when people who like us who stream have a really big uh, desire to do set all these settings up that, that Chris is going to cover. Uh, other ones I wanted to sh to talk about that are out there that are. Um, that are streaming services, whether they be cloud or software based, um, that also you don't have to worry about a lot of these things. This is much more yeah. in depth, but we want to make sure this is on the show for you so you can use it as a resource as well later. But those other tools out there like StreamYard and Zoom and vMix and LinkedIn yeah. and, and other ones are really good tools when you're starting out. But go ahead. There's Stream actually, Labs is um, also kind there. of go to ahead. just add into mm -hmm. that. Yeah, in please. Graphic <sighs> drivers you can stream from there and that's pretty easy mm. that's like mm -hmm. for somebody oh, yeah, that. get, just getting into streaming you can just open up your graphics card driver and yep. it, and uh, it doesn't matter which company both both cool. companies do it that's cool you can just hit the nvidia stream. broadcast is is the 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 thing on the nvidia side um and and we've we've used them in the past it's actually nvidia uh broadcast is actually a great virtual webcam as well uh they can they can do some good work uh, yeah, and we have adrenaline oh. software on the AMD oh. side of things. Yep. So, and yeah, it's, look it's, it up. Uh, cool. also they're both very robust, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, I, I believe adrenaline hmm. does the, virtu the virtual webcam as well. I haven't yep. had a chance to play with that one yet, uh, but I heard hear amazing things about that as well. That's awesome. Uh, so the the next thing you want to kind of set is like what your bit rate is, what you're going to actually the the quality of the video you're going to send out to the platforms. This is important because uh, in most cases. Uh, you don't want to set your bit rate above, 
uh, 6,000 kilobytes per second, 6,000 or 6,500 kilobytes per second. The reason behind that is uh, if you're streaming to Twitch or, or YouTube, that's generally the limit you, you can send to them uh, before they start uh, throttling that signal down anyway, unless you're a partner. Chances are everyone who's here is not a partner with any of those platforms. Not, no, no, no offense to you, to you, Bubba. Maybe Leslie is. I, I, I haven't had a chance. What did you, what did you say exactly? Sorry. I, I don't think you're a what Twitch did... partner yet, are you, Bubba? Uh, I have an affiliate and I have a couple different partners. Oh, yes. my gosh. <laughs> Hold I, on. I am an I, affiliate also. Okay, I'm going okay. to shut down this screen share. Bubba, you go. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> you so, can... <laughs> go ahead. So what you can do is you can just go ahead and set that to 65. I don't want to mess with everything else right now. Uh, if you uh, Generally, you're always going to use the hardware encoder because you're going to use the encoder mm -hmm. that's on your, your graphics card, mm -hmm. whether it's a AMD or NVIDIA graphics card. Um, the only other thing I'm going to have you have uh, show people to configure today is the videos tab, which is mm -hmm. the kind of the fifth down. This is where you're going to set up the resolution that's going out, um, both in terms of the canvas, which is the the area you have to set up your your streaming and the output uh, scale so what actually goes to the platform i set up my cam canvas at 1080p because that's the same size as my monitor mm -hmm. um so mm -hmm. i want my canvas to be the exact same size as my monitor i i do most of my gameplay for streaming at 1080p when i'm going awesome. to a platform though i do 720p at 60. uh the reason behind this is uh, again uh, I want to make a broadcast that's easy to watch for 99.9% .9 of my, my viewers. And most of them are either on phones, tablets, laptops that don't have huge high-resolution screens. It, there might be people that are watching Twitch on a 4K TV. More power to you. Uh, but you need to tailor your settings for the majority of the people that are going to be watching. So 7, 720p, 60 frames per second mm -hmm. is the best uh, balance between quality and uh, ease of ease of connection uh, for your viewers, and for in terms of settings, that's all I really want to talk to on that yeah. side. Today. Yeah. What I the yeah. other thing I want to show, though, really quick, and sure. uh, in the resources, thing. in the resources, and I I didn't give our guys the links to this, and mm -hmm. I, I apologize. There's a plugin you can get for OBS called NDI. Uh, once you kind of mm -hmm. plug that in. Uh, it's a it's a uh, tool that kind of shows up in tools, uh, NDI output settings. Uh, this will allow you to either a if this is the PC that's going to be doing you're going to be doing your gameplay on output, or b you allows you to set up a scene to input uh, mm -hmm. a signal from OBS. So, so right pull, now I've got that out, basic. Let's pull out a screen share and talk about this a little more if you don't mind, Chris. No, uh, real quick. Oh, you got, you got one more for me. All right, wanna, folks, wanna, listen in. I wanna, I wanna, I you wanna can't see our faces. Listen like. in. I want to show them what it looks like. Uh, this oh, okay. PC, okay, okay, okay. this uh, this instance of OBS, I don't have a game running on OBS right now. This is what the, the PC I'm going to be using to stream. Mm -hmm. I do have Halo running on a different PC in my house That's that would be my content PC, what I would play the game on. So I can use OBS and, and bring that gameplay mm -hmm. into this instance of OBS so I do that connection, and that is actually just there we go. That's gameplay we yeah. from a, another PC. I can then take my webcam if I wasn't using it on 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 this PC. I can take mm -hmm. my webcam, layer it over the top here. Take you know any other graphics I want to layer over the top, and then just kind of go through and play my game, and you know <laughs> go from there. So that's kind of the magic sauce of how to do a two yeah. PC setup there. Now oh, well, this that, is good. Let's see our faces. Hey, this is good. No, this is good. I, I, that part, that that last part was definitely even the a good thing to show in the last. That, that was the, that was that's the icing on the know. cake, Bubba. You wanted to get out of there before I <laughs> frosted my cake. Maybe <laughs> I maybe we just need to get this uh, platform to show our faces at the same time. I think that's all it really I, is. I, it, um, who knows? <laughs> the 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 thing the thing I love about the these kind of conversations though is I probably have them. I don't know. You guys probably have these. Are you ever like the nerd people call on and say, "Hey, man, something's wrong with my bit rate and my my stream's laggy and uh, why?" I have these conversations all the time about those. Uh, Leslie, you you deal with a lot of streamers and helping people. 
with setups, do you ever get these kind of fun questions about all the settings in your OBS? I get, I mean, I get all kinds of questions. <laughs> I, I run a Discord server where there's a tech area that people can come in and just ask mm. questions wow. about their PCs in general, or if yeah. they're setting up a stream or, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I do find it's like, it's those types of questions like bitrate and whatever tend to come up when somebody is just getting started. Um, yes. You know, once, and, and, once yeah, they've been running, they don't tend to look back. Nope. You know. Mm. And that's exactly Unless where a lot of our wrong. reseller. That's like exactly a lot of a lot of the 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 people I talk to uh, regularly are at. They're at the beginning. They're just looking. Mm. They're just like, how do I get started? And and most to your point, Baba, how do I get started? And like, how do I just put my webcam over this? Like, right, and and, right. and uh, trying to answer well, those it, questions and help them. Yeah, and and this is the this is why we're here showing you this deep dive because what's going to happen. Uh, to you as a reseller out there, if you're helping K-12 schools or colleges or organizations to stream some of their gameplay, because there's opportunities we're going to talk about why it's so beneficial here in a little bit. But you, you, if you're able to get these questions, or you're, you're, let's just start over, you're going to get these questions about why isn't my stream doing X or uh, what what's wrong with my computer? You get these questions. So the more you know a little bit about this stuff and use this video as a resource and do like I did, use a lot of YouTube resources to understand yep. what settings you need, you can come back to this and you can also share that information with your schools, your educators, your the uh, coaches that are out there trying to do gameplay in their schools. Awesome, Chris. Thank you so much. Leslie, I'm going to jump in with you a little bit here and get a little uh, a background before we uh, go any deeper into this into this world of streaming. I, I think you're a pretty cool person and uh, I'd, I'd love for you to share a little bit about, I wanna get to know you. I think I think it's fun that you have a little bit of DNH history and stuff in colleges. Can you share a little bit about your history uh, with what you've done in the college space? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I like to think that I don't look like it, but I have been in the high tech industry for 30 years. <laughs> and the first 10 were as a, as a, a book, a college, you know, a college bookstore or computer store uh, buyer or manager. Um, I, I worked at San Diego State, UCSD, and then spent, you know, the last five years of that at uh, uh, at uh, Stanford. And so I'd been to many a DNH trade show, you know, where they bring in all the the bookstore folks and the computer store folks to have on-site, you know, trade show visits and workshops and things like that. So um, I still have a lot of uh, old friends, including a few that, uh, you know, are still tied to DNH. So, yeah, Love Love yeah. So I've, I've got I a good you... history there. And then I got stolen from Apple, which then launched me. I, I spent 12 years at NVIDIA, which is a graphics card company. I'm sure most people will know, but just to say that. And then I've spent the last six and a half years at AMD. I've spent most of my career in the video game space anyway, of the 18 years I've been in here working directly with developers and publishers on strategic uh, mm -hmm. marketing and technical alignments and stuff. But the last uh, few years, I've really used kind of, um, you know, all, all of the all of the people that I know in the industry to kind of put together and create an influencer program over at AMD. So that's what I'm doing right now is I, I manage a bunch of influencers and I have Oh, one. wow. So I, 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 go ahead. No, go no, ahead. No, you what? Oh, I was just going to say, and I, I stream on the side, you know, as we were saying before, yeah. I'm an affiliate, small amount, three and a half thousand followers, but I, I do everything from games and building PCs and, you know, making limoncello and things like that. But it, it just keeps me, <laughs> uh in tune with what fellow streamers are doing by yeah. doing it myself you know that's what that's one thing i want to touch on before we get back into this is uh your and, and by any means now people don't go looking and getting on her twitch and saying i need help and obviously you do a ton of I, stuff on discord with <laughs> with 
I don't want you to be bombarded. Is really what I don't. I don't want. Because I'll go to our Twitch this channel to ask for baking help. <laughs> go, go, go okay. for it. Yeah. Well, I, okay. I wouldn't ask me about <laughs> baking help, but putting together <laughs> alcoholic concoctions. Sure. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's what I mean. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Well, Let's do that. Here, right? yeah. I make limoncello. Yeah. It's it's alcohol. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. Let's. let's... <laughs> Well, you you have you had specifically told me the other day you were helping um, somebody build a PC over like Discord or video. Is that what was going on? Yeah, I had so um, uh, so I've done a variety of things. I've helped a lot of people mm -hmm. build PCs, and I've built PCs for a lot of people. Um, uh, you know, a lot of people might not know all the streamers that I've built for, but you probably know Pendulette. So I've built a couple PCs for Pendulette mm -hmm. of Penn and Teller. What? Uh, and uh, Will Wheaton of Star Trek, I built a PC for him. Uh, there's some big names in the video game industry that I've built PCs for. But when somebody wants to know how to build a PC, I also help them. And I've done that for not just a variety of influencers, but I helped uh, a 12-year-old girl build her first PC over Discord. So That's she had her so iPad. Cool, yeah. And she would just zoom in on parts of her PC while I would help her understand what it was she was doing. And then most recently where I was helping was um, there's a blurred PC behind me uh, right there on that end. And uh, I did a workshop, you know, where uh, AMD has over 15,000 employees, but a bunch of executives wanted to know more about the ins and outs of PCs as a customer might experience. Mm -hmm. So I actually had a workshop. Uh, over a video conference where I guided them all through tearing apart and rebuilding PCs. Wow. So I love all it. of that. That this was a long answer. No, no. This is a really good heartstring, which kind of segues into why is streaming important for schools to take advantage of? Um, to school for um, for educators, for esport clubs, gaming clubs, colleges. I want to kind of jump into, and Chris, I'll let you answer first on this. Why, what is the benefit of actually streaming any gameplay for kids at schools? And there's also a Q and a here on the, a poll question. Feel free to take that. Yeah, we got a poll question that just went out. Uh, go ahead and answer that one. But to answer your question, uh, it's important for a variety of different reasons. I mean, we've talked for, it, it seems like forever, uh, you and I, Bubba, and I'm sure, uh, uh you, Leslie, uh, when you're talking to like a school, especially when you start to get into the collegiate level of building that community around your esports mm. program, it's not just it's not just the players that play. Uh, you need to, or you you want to foster a community of uh, people that are are actively engaging with the team, whether it be during competitions or when the team itself is doing a little bit more low key fun streams and things of that nature. Uh, so be, having the ability to get your team out on the internet as much as possible can uh, be a great uh, uh, promotion tool for your team. Kind of like, hey, see how much fun we're having doing X, Y, and Z, and then come see our competition on Saturday. Um, for a school, especially when you start to get to the high end, uh, that could be a good recruit for just having getting uh, uh, high school students that are thinking about, okay, what's my next move? I'm interested in esports. Uh, and this college over here, College X, has this great esports program. I see their stuff on Twitter and, and uh, Twitch all the time. Maybe I should go check them out. And then they get new students to come in, and they are already enrolled in that community that you built within that esports program. And then that's just something that builds. And for, for our resellers, if you're associated with a, uh, a university like that, that's just rolling sales in terms of, hardware sales and new opportunities because then you know you're setting up their esports arena you do a great job with that they might have other areas where you can help them out as so um, it's really important for those those schools and any esports team to have that streaming presence because uh, it just it, it builds that community uh, mm -hmm. uh for your your platform I, Leslie, I what would, thoughts do you have here yeah go ahead yeah i would i would add um you know, it's a, uh, uh, it's an incentive for the students to do better and to feel confident in something that they might have skills in. You know, my um, uh, my wife is in in education, 
Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, everybody, anytime you talk to a kid and, you know, and I, I get invited, not just to my wife's school, but all over the place to talk to kids mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And anytime you ask them, what is it you want to be when you grow up? They're like, I want to be a YouTuber. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. <laughs> my you son know, wants which, to. <laughs> what was that? My son wants to. He's yeah, seven. Yeah. Yeah. Every, everybody kids. wants to be that. And, and kind of like, you know, if somebody is an avid baseball player right and they might they have yeah. dreams of being on the majors you know not that many people are mm -hmm. going to make it but does it does that camaraderie that that teamwork the confidence it built into their success does that help them along their you know their educational and life journey absolutely regardless of whether they attain those goals or not you know so so i, yeah. I think it's a, a great incentive for for kids to be part of those types of teams well, I mean, let's let's talk about the inclusion part. I mean, what when we think about I know the data I get to collect from the schools that I survey when I'll, I'll, this is a great data point. I want people to make sure they use it's uh, stuff from the Varsity Sports Foundation. When we survey students who uh, participate in gaming clubs and they are a part of something, they we find that 82 percent of them don't participate in any other extracurricular activities at school. So the inclusion and the diversity and equity there. Uh, I think as well as showing on stream, the uh, diversity in your schools is really important because you can also have just this kind of microcosm of your school because 97% of kids at your school play video games already. So you're going to have students from uh, different genders and races that show up to play and participate. And uh, streaming is going to be a great way to outlet for those kids. If there's 10 kids on your esports club team, probably four of them are going to be the gamers and two will be the audio visual guys and gals that, that get things set up and you're going to have some uh, shoutcasters or commentators. So I think it's really important to make sure that we cover that. Um, any other thoughts on benefits or inclusion at all? You guys? Um, I, I mean, I, you know, inclusion and uh you know mm -hmm. diversity equity and i mm -hmm. i call it belonging right it's a little mm -hmm. deeper than inclusion where people feel like they belong as a part of something kind of within within this industry so um, i think you've made some great points the student population is very diverse and this is definitely an area where they can feel like they come together with some commonality um, and i think you're kind of spot on to where there's different strengths uh, you know, somebody might be the extra extrovert and more outwardly, mm. out, outwardly yeah. spoken and, and be the host of something uh, or the voice of something that when it, it's being streamed live and there's the, the more of the technical people that just want to be in the background, but work on the audio mm -hmm. and things like, things like that, you know, George. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, to, yeah. But to be fair, <laughs> like I, I, I would say when I was when I was younger and I started streaming, I was very much an introvert. I didn't like I wasn't I was wouldn't talk to very many people, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. Clearly not the case anymore. Uh, <laughs> but it's because of a lot of just, you know, getting comfortable streaming and having people connect to my stream and connecting with those people made me realize like oh yeah it's connecting with people isn't so bad but like when you're first starting you could be in your shell and it could be something that helps you break out of that shell which is mm. is very uh very meaningful for for young students there is a and, and, um i mean that's a really good point too that because there's a really strong community aspect in streaming so when i when i mm. get online and i stream I have a community that shows up. I, I did a, um, I was a guest on uh, G4 TV recently mm, and I, yeah. uh, in December and I, um, you know, helped one of their stars build a PC live on stream and um, 50,000 people watched, right? And uh, and in the chat, the, the folks were, the folks that were running the show were like, Oh, this is great. They love you. They want you back, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm, I'm pretty sure it was everybody from my community that just went in and <laughs> <laughs> nice. hyped me up kind of thing. But nice. you have this community, you create a community that will follow you from Twitch to discord mm -hmm. to, you know, if you, if you go on a friend's channel, they'll follow you there and communicate and there. And it's, it's actually something that you create as a streamer, you create the tone of, 
who it is that's in your community and and what they're like mm. you know and so you know my community is all about being a good person and and accept whomever is in here the way they are kind of mm -hmm. thing and and uh you know and so there's a, lo a lot of emphasis on kindness and lifting each other up as we you know do headshots or whatever <laughs> yeah. nice which, well, which if important. you could see if leslie said a headshot when when we, sh we were having her part of it oh yeah her headshot's the best yeah. it's so the cool. best Perfect. Ten out of ten. It's, little it is, little explosion yeah, right yes, there. It's it is great. A, Fantastic. It is a lightsaber. I, I hope, yeah. I hope it's the headshot. We, I hope it's we. It's the headshot we used as part of this. I think it's it was the on there. Yeah, yeah. It's the best. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so community. So what I hear you guys saying, I hear, is community is a big part of what's happening in clubs and uh, esport programs and streaming, and discords. It's funny. I I, I think about that answer. And I think about my buddy who's my my insurance agent, and he's like, oh, I want to get into streaming. And he started streaming Halo because we're playing Halo together. And it's another one of my friends that I'm helping set up their computer and their stream and everything. And it's like, well, how do I – I don't want to make money or really be big. And, uh, but how do I run my stream? And he's like, well, how do I get big and market this? So what do I need to do to have more followers? And, you know, it's – I, I bought a bunch of followers on Twitch and I bought, you know, I'm like, what are you doing? Don't do this sort of stuff. <laughs> Golly, Don't right? do that. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. And, uh, and so <laughs> I said, I said, look, man, he, he, this is a, a full-time job. It's a full-time job to be a streamer of one and be your company of one and, and build a brand. Cause then you're going to then they're going to expect you to be on a schedule and they're going to expect you to be in the discord if, if you don't set boundaries. Right. But uh, it's, it's a, it's a big job. And when we talk about schools doing this, we talk about schools, business community. I, I, I don't know if anybody else takes it this way, but the idea of a traditional sports being uh, broadcast for a high school or a college onto a platform, whether it be, you know, CBS sports or something right for college football, or I remember some high schools that are doing it in some sort of pay to pay to watch kind of platforms or even, yeah. uh, even soccer. I know there's a soccer field here in Kansas city where there's a, it's actually pretty cool. There's a camera that follows the ball and tracks it on the soccer fields. What? And then you can pay like five bucks to watch your grandkids game uh, yeah. from somewhere and pretty cool. Uh, but it, 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 is that, is, is that a beneficial thing in uh, streaming for maybe families when we talk about schools? So, because our, our kids lining up, our, our parents lining up and sitting in the stands at, at, at matches at schools? I don't know. What do you guys think? I, I mean, I, I personally would think as of right now, in terms of if you're a parent and you have a, a, a child that's, that's participating in esports, e uh, you will probably do your best to connect when you can. But uh, being esports being what it is, it's so new. I think once you kind of get to the point where the kids that are in school now start to have kids themselves that get into these programs, they're like, oh, I had an esports program when I was in school and I, I was participating in it. And now my kids in it, they're going to be a little bit more um, uh, likely to engage with it at that point. You see this. I, I can use the analogy of, of football where mm -hmm. I played high school football. Now my kid plays high school football and I go to all of his games because there's mm -hmm. that connection between parent and, and child. Uh, that's not there yet, but as you start to build, like we talked about earlier, build that community, build that um, following, uh, not only are you gonna get parents that are the, the ones that are uh, uh, a part of, you know, have a child that's part of the program, you're gonna get alumni that just like hey i follow my old high school or my old college on twitch and they went live right now and they're playing against my old rival and then they watch because mm -hmm. because they're live and they've, they've already they're already part of that program it's a snowball effect and that snowball yeah, just I, gets bigger and bigger i think we might be i mean getting there like if you go yeah, to we're getting close. I, yeah i mean if you it, there's a couple things i look at one is you know, in the world of 7.7 .7 billion people, there are 3.2 billion gamers. Mm -hmm. So there's there's a lot out there of a variety of, of generations. So I think we're on the cusp of of seeing that. And then if you go to an esports event, it's mm -hmm. crowded like a sports game. It, you know, I've I've been to the UCLA basketball arena for 
um, I, I, I think it was a StarCraft event or, or something like that. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was a League of Legends. I don't know. But it was packed everywhere. There were people watching <laughs> yep. as if it were a basketball game. It was insane. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. Uh, which which comes up really good question we have in the chat from Marianne Ortega the, about the college space. Um, now there are some high schools. I, I asked that question to you guys because I knew the answer, but I, I I talk too much. So yes, there are high schools doing this thing in, in larger spaces. Some like Dallas who have you know three million dollar bond to to build these arenas in the D Dallas ISD. But the high school space isn't as strong as the college space we see. And I definitely want to ask some questions about uh, what, what relates to Marianne's uh, question is around what other hardware and accessories we should be looking at to serve um, uh, colleges in the college space that are looking to convert. Uh, and I've seen this with some friends here uh, in Kansas City, Ottawa University, they converted an old uh, little theater into an esports arena. Mm -hmm. but, and they, but they worked with people to do lighting and audio and visual. What, what other accessories or hardware do you think is going to be beneficial for the college space when we talk about needing to stream, needing to have a audience in maybe a repurposed room or putting something in the gym? What, 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 is, what is kind of needed for that space and college uh, space for streaming and whatnot? Yeah, we can kind of get away from the the obvious stuff that we've talked about before. You, you mm -hmm. need your your video walls and your 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 lighting and your audio for inside the space, so that the people that are, are live can can also participate and, and view the, the competition. But kind of as you start to grow these solutions out and they become uh, uh, much larger, you know, you know, getting the the broadcast to Twitch or YouTube may still go through OBS, but the only thing that's going to OBS is a single mix signal that you've now sent from a, a higher end broadcast solution. Uh, this is when you start to kind of get into, this is live TV. You're, you're using, you're using uh, the same equipment you would use for shooting a basketball game, shooting, you know, your football games, shooting your more traditional sports. And where that signal goes at the end is just, you know, it's just relative to, to the sport. And if it's going to Twitch, it's going to some streaming platform, that's where it's going. So uh, on the higher ed side, yeah, they're looking at broadcast equipment, very similar to what you would see for normal sports with the also the additive of, you know, you might need eight video intakes because you got eight players and you want to be able to capture each one of their screens or you need you know two mm -hmm. intakes because you're doing two observers or something like that so mm -hmm. there's there's an extra component that is the pc stuff going to the broadcast but that equipment is almost one-to-one -one the same yeah and i i would add that um all of the hardware that is being used for the competitive purposes should be exact same specs <laughs> yep. yep the exact exactly. same keyboard exact same mouse mm -hmm. uh i would look at hard wiring over wi-fi so you know yeah. so that everything is hardwired in and then um for the broadcasting part i would actually probably see if there's a, a consultant to tap into who's already who's already done that because yeah, I, I the broadcasting part gets a little tricky when you get into that esports arena event style yeah, that's that's a great point. I wouldn't recommend any of our, our resellers unless you're very experienced in that field to kind of jump into that field without consulting with someone because, you know, I came from broadcast. It's complicated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and certainly our session isn't going to prepare you for that. No, whatever no. The question Again, is, so. <laughs> I, I don't know how much time you guys have today, but we don't have seven hours. Chris has a slideshow to yeah, show us. Yeah. Chris has but, some uh, presentation. Okay, let me screen share again. Hold my God. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, uh, so, yeah, I hope that helps, you know, Marianne. Somebody there, asked earlier right? about a monitor, and I don't know if that was answered, but I think that would fit. It would kind of combine with Marianne, where somebody was asking what the best monitor is. And I and uh, just to kind of throw that out there, because each PC would need its own monitor, and then obviously the broadcasting setup would need an array of monitors kind of thing but yeah. you're you're looking at 144 hertz and above um mm -hmm. and then 
you really want to pay attention to what the graphics card is in the in the PC um, because each graphics card company has a slightly different tech that works with monitors. It's easy to look up, but AMD has FreeSync and Nvidia has G-Sync, and so those those are the really the key things to look for. And then monitor size is entirely entirely up mm. to you. Love it, love it. Well, if you're just chiming in here, we are about three quarters of the way done with our Esports Anywhere virtual and hybrid events DNH Solutions Lab webcast. I got all that out, way to go. Uh, hey, if you're in the chat, feel free to answer some questions. I see I see Roberts in the chat. Uh, how are you, sir? Ronnie, John, let's see, Don, thanks for being here. David, see, this is community right here, guys. Uh, let's see, Diane, Leslie, thank you for being here. Richard, a lot of really great people here. If you've got questions, please drop them in the chat. And before we, as we wrap wrap up here and as we wind down, um, I we, we, we've covered kind of what streaming services, whether platforms or cloud-based or software-based. Uh, Chris, you talked a little bit about a dual PC setup, which helps if, for those out there, if you're producing something or a school needs to produce something, I wanted to say, ask benefits over doing everything on one PC to multiple PC setup. Chris, I'll let you take that. What are the benefits there for streaming uh, gameplay? Yeah, for streaming gameplay for a school, I would actually very much recommend kind of something that I showed you at the similar or similar to what I showed you at the beginning, because you can have a PC just for your casters. Uh, they can connect their 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 webcam, their microphone to it, and then they can grab the gameplay from an observer or possibly you know anywhere from you know one to eight players uh, right through OBS, and then that signal's going out. It makes it very easy for the school to produce because they're only worrying about one pc streaming to the internet uh then like you, like we talked about uh, uh about five minutes ago once you start to get up into those higher higher ed situations uh it might be difficult uh, if you've got nine ten eleven different cameras through obs uh even if you've got uh, a stream deck or, or some kind of uh, device that's helping you do the switching it could get complicated real quick and that's when you need to start moving thinking about moving yourself into okay this is this is broadcast now i've got to start using more broadcast appropriate equipment great so that's good so that i definitely definitely make sure people out there understand and, and that's just another opportunity for you to make sure schools and programs get the right equipment because they're, they're walking into this blind. A lot of people are walking into the blind or they have a student who has championed their college program. Yeah. I just got off the phone with a student yesterday who, um, bless his heart, you know, had some really great, uh, passion and, uh, made sure I directed in the right spot for it. Cause they, they, they want to champion an esport program at their, at their college. And that's really the ground up model that's working the best right now. And so if you are out there, we'll, we'll have a question later a little bit more about how you can become certified uh, with the DNHK 12 certification for esports. Yeah, we'll providers. do that right now. How about oh, that? Go ahead. We'll ask, yeah. we'll ask so people you, now if they've done it. Think, you know what? It's a good, good time. So there is a oh. DNHK 12 esport provider certification. And please take that if you are a DNH partner, which you can do simply on their website, dnh.com slash esports. Uh, you can be a partner and get a, a big discount on that certification course that really goes through you know, how how and why should there be an esports club at a school and how and do you talk to an educator or administrator about how an esports club and what should get started and what equipment they should use and why. Kind of really a, a larger two-hour certification course of what we're kind of talking about here today. So please, and if you haven't taken that, we'll make sure we get it in the chat for you. And some really good questions here. I, I wanted to round out a, a, a last fun questions here uh, as well. I don't know, Leslie, are you able to show anything cool though? Of your yeah, of your I, other I think PC? so. If you want to, if you want to see it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love to see here, cool I'll, stuff. I'll switch so, cameras. <laughs> and I, you know, I did want to add because I, I think you have a lot of resellers on here, right? So, um, I think the two PC setup is, uh, is something that you can keep keep people going as they're buying PCs, right? Because you might use your old PC as a streaming rig. Right. So they don't get rid of their old PC. And then every couple of years they're they're upgrading and, and shifting down. 
So let me switch my camera here. Do you have a camera inside your PC? Because I would try to set up that. <laughs> that would be awesome. There we go. Oh, she does. Oh, no way. This is somebody asked. Oh, let me George. remove the blur effect here. Hold on. Somebody <laughs> asked the. Uh, uh, if I, you know, what my most tricked out PC is mm, in this. Wow. I, uh, I liquid cooled this so you can see the tubes in here. I'm actually going to redo it with some hard tubes, which take its own kind of like uh, bending with tools and heat and stuff like that. But yeah, <laughs> I've got, uh, uh, was it 12, 12 fans in here? Uh, the CPU is on a water block. You know, I, uh, Drilled a hole to install a reservoir, and yeah, that's that's uh, it. That's that's my baby. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> I had a I lot of it. I had a lot of fun building that one. Mm -hmm. Not not for all, the beginner all, build. Yeah, no, all of us no, nerds are going crazy. No. Us, all, every, Le every nerd Leslie, here I have in a chat is going I, crazy. I have a question, Leslie. This is sincerely. Um, how do I? It, 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 this is just for a friend. How do how do, how would someone manipulate the company that they work for to give them the exact job, job title of what they want for, and do whatever they want? Because 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 I, I just just let me know. I and I'm just gonna take. And that. If, guys, <laughs> Leslie's Leslie's name at her at her company is your best friend. By the way, that's your that's your my title. Yeah, title. I negotiated yeah. that at the hiring process. So luckily oh, they so wanted me bad enough um, and i wasn't in a do. situation where i was desperate where it's like my title is your best friend you good with that and they're like sure <laughs> <laughs> Chris, i think I you need a few do. more years of i mean a few more years my of friend <laughs> <laughs> so there was a question here in the chat about the certifications i wanted to uh make sure you guys know there was a 2020 2021 esports provider certification course that is that is out it's now rolled over to 2022 and i think it's public and it's going out there's a 2022 cec continuing education credit course that is going to be i uh, should be on the dnh.com um, slash esports site here soon and hey if you if you haven't taken it you can take it right now and get the 2022 uh, badge that you can put on your on your signature you can you can sew it on your shirt if you'd like and if you did take the previous course, there is a continuation credit. It's a lot shorter. I'll tell you that. Uh, you see Chris Phillips on one of the videos. You see myself on one of the videos, or two of the videos, three of the videos, four of the videos. And there's, so there's not very many. It's very <laughs> short. Um, so please make sure you check that out. It's on the same esports education network, but it, you can get it through dnh.com slash esports. But we should be getting some definite uh, information out to you. Okay, wrapping up here. Leslie, what is what is a go-to game for you right now? Oh, I mean, so my favorite franchise of all time is Borderlands. So when I'm not doing anything, mm -hmm. I go to anything Borderlands. And I can't wait for Tiny Tina's Wonderlands to come out in the very near future. Um, and uh, uh, I have been going back to right now lately uh, to Assassin's Creed, both Odyssey mm -hmm. and Valhalla, because there, there's a crossover story. So I, I like two things in my games. I like I like headshots because I love doing that, whether it's with an arrow or a gun. <laughs> but I also love a good story. And so I've gone back to Assassin's Creed to nice. get that story. And then I recently nice. finished Mass Effect. Like I play anything oh, and yeah. I I've worked on a variety of games in my career too. So I've like all the Batman Arkham series or or wow. whatever. So yeah. We need another whole few hours with you. Talk about yeah. all this cool stuff. <laughs> Off of, let's not talk about all the you know the stuff you guys are learning here today about technology. Let's just talk about all the cool stuff you've done. Yep, you <laughs> to have another show for you specifically. <laughs> Chris, what's a good game for you right now? Uh, I I I I had to take a break from Valorant after that that event that we did. After I made was, you lose. We we, we we trained so hard for that, and uh, I kind of got burned out with that. Um, Y'all trained? Moved, uh, uh, was I supposed to train? <laughs> Sure. <laughs> I, moved, I moved from there. I started playing Halo because Halo came out right after mm -hmm. that. So I, mm -hmm. I played through Infinite. I recently started playing uh, the, the Pokemon Legends that came out, uh, mm -hmm. which, uh, you know, playing Pokemon since 97. It's been kind of a, mm -hmm. a nice change. But recently I, I've jumped back into Valorant again. So oh, yeah. that was been, been what yeah. I've jumped back into for the last couple of weeks. That's right. That's right. Awesome. 
Well, we're, we're wrapping up here. Thank you guys for being here in the chat. If you got any last questions, I see, I see Taryn from SDS. How are you? Got some pretty cool people here from, I know we've got our two trees friend Casey out there. And if you, if you need to, if you just got here and you missed out on some of the stuff, this is going to be on our solutions lab for DNH. It's going to be on our dnh.com slash esports uh, site. So you can use these tools as a reference. All these links that we've talking about with, uh, sorry, it's on DH TV as well. And all these links that will, uh, for the resources, for the playbook that's out there that was created by DNH esports uh, with Logan. Thank you so much. You can reach out to Logan or Brandon or Chris or myself. We'll definitely help you with any of these questions. But yeah, I, you guys have been great. This has been a fun, fun time for me. Do you have any things you want to close with about maybe technology or about what's going on in the world of, of, of your awesomeness? I, I'm, I'm pointing to Leslie of awesomeness <laughs> right here because Chris, you're not there yet, obviously. So. That's fine. I, I accept that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Somebody asked if Zwift would be considered an esport, and um. There is <laughs> yeah. a difference between multiplayer and esports competition, mm -hmm. right? So multiplayer can be a game where there's people coming in and playing together, but it's not necessarily something used in esports as competitive and, and uh, something that uh, the video game industry has had to learn is that you can't just mm -hmm. call something an esports <laughs> game just because yeah. it's multiplayer, but you have to wait and see if people actually decide to compete with it and so that's the differentiator between multiplayer and esport is is people actually invest invest in competing this is a, this is a good grenade that you just threw in and just walked away from here leslie <laughs> I lost there's, it. Uh, Boom. there's there's so many uh, i there billy howard from uh the generation esports he'll 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 debate all day that some of the games out there are not esports and there's a lot of people who say they're all so there's a there's a it's it's a very valid point um, even though esports says it's competition and prizing and rules, you're right. Not not everything fits because it's just sexy, right? Se esports is the sexy word that we're trying to all throw around. So that's a great that's a great grenade. Thank you for that. Yeah. Holy hand grenade. <laughs> you're welcome. I'm good with <laughs> explosives. Part of gaming. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Borderlands and whatnot. All right. Yeah. Chris, last thoughts. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, it's a great point because like there there are games that come out. Uh, Knockout Cities came out last year and they had huge esports aspirations and it just didn't pan out. The community never uh, came up there for it. So, yeah, they esports is really about, you know, having that community around uh, gamers that not only want to compete, but to watch others compete. Uh, so that's that's a great thing to think about. Um, as always, if any of the resellers out there uh, need help building out a solution or or need help just getting these conversations off the ground with their resellers, uh, I, I highly recommend reaching out to our esports, uh, our group at esports at dnh dot com. Uh, we can help you with any hardware needs you might need. We can help you get the discussion going. Uh, we can just help answer any general questions that might come up. So, please use this as a resource whenever you need us. I have one more thought mm -hmm. on the please. streaming part, which is yeah. if you when you help people get going as, as streamers and they get a community, um, in terms of selling more product, that kind of marketing is gold because mm -hmm. when a streamer lists their specs, specs on their about area and people mm -hmm. are watching them and wanting to know what it is that they're using, that leads you know right back to you. Love it. See, so. that, the, you guys, you stuck around for the last few minutes and you got a golden egg right there. It's great stuff. And uh, you had a, a grenade earlier. So yeah, thank you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Leslie, Chris, thank you so much for being here today. If if you're out there and you want to make sure you use this resource, I believe there's going to be email. If you were in the chat today, you're going to be getting an email with this information, uh, a link, I think, back to this presentation. But yeah, we had 80 people uh, on an average and probably over about 100 kind of different viewers throughout the day so thank you guys for being here today on the d and h solutions lab this was esports anywhere virtual and hybrid events we're talking about streaming we're talking about technology that you need to use so definitely go through back that first 15 minutes because there's a lot of really good stuff on a, on a presentation by chris about all the 
ins and outs of the settings that you'll probably get asked questions about from these educators and parents. So Leslie, thank you so much for being here, Chris. I appreciate your time. You guys have been amazing. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. I really enjoyed it and very good questions. Thanks, guys. See ya. All right. All right, guys. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much for being here. See you guys later. Thanks. See you, Nate.